welcome to the Franklin County Chamber's Powering Community Breakfast. It's been a few years since we've been at Greenfield Community College and it's great to be back. Thank you all for coming today. Thank you for the GCC Kitchen and Geraldine. I always look forward to her yogurt bars. <laughs> um, we also like to thank today's sponsors, Greenfield Community College and the Greenfield Community College Foundation. And now please join me in welcoming GCC President, Dr. Michelle Shu. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Greenfield Community College. I am Michelle Shute, president of GCC, and we're very excited to have local business, op, local business leaders like all of you here to join us this morning on our beautiful campus and to enjoy some of the wonderful food provided by our amazing dining staff. Can we give them one more round of applause, please? At GCC, our goal is to power community. Every decision we make as an institution, every student we enroll, retain, and graduate, every person we train so that they can build on a successful career, and every partner we help connect to the region, it is all to power community. Our students are powering community, both when they're here and after they leave to go on to transfer institutions like UMass or Westfield State, or when they enter the workforce. In fact, 81% of our graduates stay right here in Franklin or Hampshire County. I think that's pretty amazing. They stay here to buy homes and to enroll their children in the local schools. They stay here to support our local businesses and work as bankers, accountants, nurses and paramedics, firefighters, machinists, engineers, teachers, childcare providers, and so much more. We are also powering the community as key employers in the region ourselves, providing over 160 people with careers in education, advising, administration, advocacy, student support services, and more. Some of these people are GCC graduates themselves. GCC is also powering the community by working with organizations across the region. We partner with organizations like the Franklin County Chamber, mass hire and others to ensure that the workforce pipeline in the region is robust and responsive to the unique needs that we face. After all, only those of us in the community can truly understand what those unique needs are. We're powering the community by providing educational opportunities for people outside the walls of GCC as well. Each year GCC works on events like Take the Floor Pitch Competition, which gives entrepreneurs a chance not only to get free business training, but to also compete for $10,000 in awards to serve as seed money for their businesses. Thank you, Franklin County First Credit Union, for helping with this. We also bring unique business opportunities like the Goods Pop-Up Shop to the community, providing local entrepreneurs the chance to utilize low-cost storefronts located on Main Street right here in Greenfield. And these efforts to offer our services to people outside the institution are expanding. Right now, our workforce development team is working on creating a mobile welding learning lab, which will allow us to bring trainings to those seeking upskill or reskill across the region. We are also starting to work on the Route 2 Innovation Corridor, which, thanks to funding from the state, will give us a chance to meet entrepreneurs here in Greenfield and in Orange and provide them training to build on their ideas. Finally, we're powering the community by continuing to provide what we have for the past 60 years, a quality liberal arts education. We offer well-rounded educations to our students, setting them up for success through lessons from experienced expert faculty and comprehensive support from, con from caring and knowledgeable staff. Each student matters here, and we make sure of it. This is reflected in the successes of our students which they achieve year after year, including a top graduation rate for students amongst community colleges in the state and the best average first year transfer GPA at UMass compared to other community college transfers. After all, each of these students is someone's child. And as the parent of a GCC student, I want to know that her educational institution is doing everything it can to make her a stronger, more knowledgeable, more worldly person. So thank you. Thank you for joining us and helping us power the community. 
You are all helping to improve our region in your own unique way, and we appreciate your support every single day. I will now turn it over to Alexis Page, Executive Director of the GCC Foundation, who will tell you how you can reinforce your support in community. Good morning, everyone. As Michelle said, thank you for joining us on this chilly fall morning here at GCC. Um, I'm Alexis, and I'm the executive director of the foundation here at the school. So what that means is that it's my job to help raise money um, to support the programs and scholarships that help GCC provide a high quality, accessible education to all who seek it. Do me a favor and raise your hands if you're a GCC alum and please keep your hands in the air. Raise your hand if you have a family member or a neighbor who is a GCC alum. Keep them in the air. Raise your hand if you work with someone who is a GCC alum. Raise your hand if you have ever partnered with GCC on a community initiative or project. Looks like that's all, most of the, the hands. That's a pretty clear visual represent, rep, representation of how GCC powers community. <clears throat> Since GCC first opened in 1962, over 60,000 people have passed through GCC's halls to explore new interests and career options or take the first step towards obtaining a degree. That's a lot of lives changed. And we rely on the generosity of people like each of you to keep our programs accessible and affordable. With many of our students facing increased economic pressures, scholarships are increasingly important. This fall, a generous donor is matching 50% of every gift for our, for our endowed GCC scholarship fund received between now and Giving Tuesday, which is November 29th, up to $10,000. I hope that you will help us meet this match by taking a few minutes to make a gift to GCC today. There are QR codes on each of your tables. Or you can see Nancy. Nancy, can you raise your hand? Who has some giving envelopes? Every single gift makes a difference. It really does, no matter the size. It's an investment in one GCC student. It's an investment in the workforce pipeline of Franklin and Hampshire counties and in our community as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis, and welcome to Franklin County, Dr. Shute. I'm gonna just tell you a quick story. So Michelle and I met a couple months ago, and on my way to that meeting, Holly, I think Holly's here from the United Way, called and said, hey, I have a hundred, like, numeral 100 balloons in my car, I'm driving around, would you stop and take a picture? And I was like, of course, your timing's perfect. I'm actually on my way to GCC right now to meet Michelle, I bet she would take a picture too. So when I got here, I said, hey, Michelle, just really quick, if we could just grab a, a picture with 100 balloons, Holly's going to stop by really quick, which I did a terrible job explaining. Um, and I, I saw the look on her face, and she was like, oh, OK, sure. Well, she was very relieved when Holly showed up with a 100 balloons, and we did not actually fill her office with 100 balloons. But <laughs> let it be known that Michelle is a team player. Um, so thank you to GCC for hosting. Thank you to the GCC Foundation and GCC for sponsoring this breakfast. As you just heard, and as we all know, the significance of Greenfield Community College is right there in the name, community. For Franklin and Hampshire counties, GCC prepares local students of all ages to excel in a local workforce. And I couldn't be more thrilled to have Michelle leading GCC forward and have Alexis helping to make a high quality local education more accessible for students of all ages. So thank you. Greenfield Community College is an integral thread in the fabric of Franklin County. And that's really what today's breakfast is all about. This morning we're he we'll hear how learning, living, and buying local powers our community. But of course, first we need to start with a couple welcomes. We are excited to have a number of the folks attending their first Franklin County Chamber breakfast today. So when I call your name, please stand or give a wave. 
Uh, welcome to the new Director of Community Relations at First Light Power, Andy Bridges. Hi, Andy. Erin Callahan from Cohen Company Real, Real Estate is attending her first breakfast. Welcome, Erin. I don't know that I saw Jeremy, but Jeremy Golcher from Green Space Cowork is allegedly here. No, okay. He wanted to be. Um, Lamara Hunter Kelly and Terry Thompson are joining us from the consortium. Welcome, Lamar and Terry. Mara Coles. From my alma mater, Stony Burnham School is here. Mara is the director of enrollment management. Welcome, Mara, and go Owls. Um, fun fact: I was the mascot for two years. <laughs> Susan White, associate director of volunteer services at Life Path, is joining us this morning. Good morning, Susan. All right, I don't. We were we were slated to have a crew from Franklin County CDC, and I'm I'm not sure they were able to make it today, but. Um, they did a tremendous job. Are they here? <laughs> oh, great, fantastic. You, congratulations on a really successful annual meeting. Um, Lisa and I had the opportunity to attend the Franklin County CDC annual meeting on Wednesday night, and it was a fantastic event. There is so much great energy around supporting inspiring entrepreneurs, so congratulations on a really impactful year and a great event. And then last but certainly not least, welcome to new chamber member Mac, uh, Mike McIntyre. Mike is a professional coach based right here in Greenfield and we are thrilled to have him join the network. Welcome Mike. So moving on to a few quick announcements. Franklin County Festival of the Trees is back thanks to the Greenfield Kiwanis Club and the Franklin County Rotary. This year's festival is being held at Aromatic Fillers in South Deerfield with all proceeds dedicated towards local social services and selected nonprofits. Please check out the Franklin County Festival of the Trees Facebook page for details. Um, we're not quite ready to release the details of our December after hours yet, but we'll just say that it's likely to be a very festive event and it will be tremendous. <laughs> so keep an eye out for that. Light Up the Fairgrounds starts November 25th and admission benefits our friends at Big Brothers Big Sisters Franklin County and the Franklin County Fairgrounds and the Franklin County Regional Dog Shelter. Thank you to all the member organizations who are helping to support that event. I have heard from a few today that they are using their garages and basements as a workshop for that event. So thanks to everyone who is no longer able to park in their garage. Moonlight Magic is back again this year and is scheduled for Friday, to November 25th from 4 to 9 in downtown Shelburne Falls. There is no general admission fee, but this is a really fantastic family celebration of light, community, and local businesses and artisans. So head up the hill and support our friends in Shelburne Falls. Bill could not be here this morning, but Baker Office Supplies is holding a holiday sale today with a number of items and gifts for 50% off. So stop in and check that sale out. Um, I did check Baker's is open at nine, so you can, you can stop in on your way back to work. Please tell Bill we missed him. Okay, everybody, take your program, flip it over. I want you to have a visual for this next announcement. This year's Citizen of the Year Breakfast is set for Friday, December 16th at Deerfield Academy. I know so many of us here love the thrill and suspense of waiting until the week of to register, but you can <laughs> do it ahead of that. And in fact, we really, really love it when you do, Marion especially. So please use that fancy QR code on the back of your programs and register early and often. This is one of our largest events of the year. It's always been one of my favorites, so please make sure you join us for that. If you would like to sponsor a table or donate a gift card to that event, please see Marianne before you leave. And since we're talking about generosity, I'd like to publicly thank Tony Morden of Greenfield Cooperative Bank and Meryl Gagne of Gagne Wealth Management for their quick response to a growing need we're seeing in our local food pantries. Unfortunately, one in eight of our Franklin County neighbors face food insecurity and to make matters even more challenging, food supply and shade shortages have significantly impacted local food pantries and their ability to meet a steadily increasing need. For that reason, we're partnering with our friends at Rachel's Table and encouraging all Franklin County businesses to hope what we're calling a canned do food drive. 
That's, that's good. You can laugh. It's really good. <laughs> Rachel's Table is making it really easy for all of us to get involved by providing donation boxes if needed and offering to pick up any donations you or your business may collect. You can also drop off any non-perishable items to the chamber office in Deerfield, or I can come pick them up if that's helpful. If you're interested in hosting a food drive, please visit the chamber website to see a wish list of non-perishable food items being requested by our local pantries. Obviously, some items are harder to get than others. Or reach out to Jay at Rachel's Table. That contact information is listed on the Chamber website right under the What's New section. Uh, this is obviously a time when we're all a little cognizant of hunger and food insecurity, so please join us in this community-wide effort. Right after you register for the Citizen of the Year Breakfast on December 16th at Deerfield Academy. And then lastly, as we head into the holidays, please remember to tag the Chamber in your social media posts and promotions. Our job at the Chamber is to support your success, success and help heighten your business and on profile. So please tag us or add us on social media so we can share your good news with the network and our Franklin County followers. And speaking of good news, I am delighted to turn the floor over to Mayor Roxanne Wiedegardner for some exciting updates from the city of Greenfield. Good morning, everyone. I'm really delighted to be here at Greenfield Community College with all of you, um, the crown jewel of education in Franklin County, Western Mass, is Greenfield Community College. So um, we all owe them all a debt of gratitude for the work that they do here. So um, yes, we had a good week in Greenfield. Uh, speaking of powering a community, we think of Greenfield as everybody's home. So when we have good news, we'd love to share it with everyone. And um, it's been a really great week, uh, starting with the groundbreaking for our brand new $21 million fire station uh, at the east, uh, I'm sorry, the west end of Main Street. We all know what's going on at the east end of Main Street, which is another beautiful brand new building. Um, so the fire station, as you know, not only serves the people of Greenfield, but it also serves uh, the community that we live in uh, with its mutual aid, with its many ways in which they, um, they provide services to uh, Franklin County. I'm reminded of, um, unfortunately, the pandemic, but when the fire department, when the fire chief set up the emergency operations center at John Zahn, where we serviced many people uh, throughout the county, whether it was uh, with uh, vaccinations or just having uh, an information center and being able to distribute masks and, and other things. Um, so to have a brand new fire station in our community uh, is, is just a, a, a complete reward uh, for, my being, for my being able to be part of it. Uh, it's been a very exciting time, and I can't wait for it to get built. Um, I, uh, I did run into someone yesterday, and, uh, and he said, so, what's been going on in Greenfield? And I thought he was kidding. I, I must have looked at him. He said, is there any news? I must have looked at him like, like that or something. I don't know. He said, well, I've been out of town. So <laughs> it was... Uh, it's been, a, it's been a great time this week. And I, I, I want to move on to, of course, the second big piece of news. I don't really put them in one, two order. And that is uh, what's going to happen at Wilson's and the, and the fact that uh, our anchor in downtown Greenfield is um, secure at this time. And I couldn't have done it. I wanted her to come up here. I wanted her to come up here, but she refused to come. Um, so you can tell how much power I have over the people who work for me. Um, and that is MJ Adams, our commun community and economic development director. And um, 
And for MJ, community is the big part of what she does. She loves Greenfield, even though she doesn't live here yet. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, she has been a big part of all the good things, whether it's housing, economic development, and so forth that happen. And this particular project at Wilson's, which is a partnership, it's a beautiful public-private partnership between um, Mass Development, uh, it's a financing agency for the, for the state of Massachusetts, a very, very uh, progressive, open-minded, business-friendly um, organization, and uh, the Community Builders, TCB, a very reputable uh, builder, uh, I'm sorry, developer, primarily of housing, although in, many, in the last few years they've branched out to more uh, mixed-use development. And so what we, and then the city of Greenfield uh, basically has helped sort of facilitate the, um, the work that they are do, have done to get to the spot where they are, which was the closing this week and to bring in the Franklin County, uh, Franklin Community Co-op, again the word community, uh, something that we all share uh, a love of, not just the people who live in Greenfield. Giving them the opportunity to take over the first floor and expand their, op their options uh, for uh, providing food and food services. It's just, um, it's just going to be a beautiful partnership. We anticipate that being a, it does, so it, it'll take a while. I wish it would move a little faster, but um, the co-op will be able to begin work in there next fall, and the uh, community builders are, will be shortly behind them. So MJ and I are fond of saying, in five years, you will not know Main Street in Greenfield because so much will have happened on that. Uh, street, and we'll just be continuing to progress. I had a vision when I became mayor of economic development in Greenfield that included downtown and that elevated downtown, and I, we are well on our way to achieving that. So I feel, a, thank you. I feel especially blessed to be to have the job that I do and to be here today and to round out this week with such good news, so thank you. Thank you, Mayor. It is a great week for Franklin County. That's so exciting about Wilson's. Thank you, MJ, thank you, Mayor. Thank you to everybody who's been involved. It really is great news. Um, now, as you all know, I'm newer to this role, and there's a learning curve with any new job. So when it came time to plan our November breakfast, I thought, all right, well, that's a really busy time for retailers. We should focus on retailers. Turns out, asking retailers to stop what they're doing so that they can tell you all about retail, not the best idea. So I just want to say a big thank you to Astronauta, to Joy, and to Raymond for taking the time to be here. We really appreciate it. Our first speaker is Joy Sullivan, who is the owner of Enjoy, located right next to the Potholes in downtown Shelburne Falls. She is part of New Light Magic, so you can catch her on the 25th when you go. Uh, last, uh, Joy last joined us in February for the I Love My Job breakfast, and is back this morning to remind us all why she loves her job and why we'll love her store. So please help me welcome Joy. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you for inviting me again. Thank you, members, for being here. Yes, I spoke um, back in February, and that was the first breakfast I'd been to, and um, I got the email about this one, and thought, you know, I really need to go to a breakfast because the last one I spoke at. <laughs> and then I get a call from Jesse, and I'm thinking, okay, don't do it, don't do it. This isn't my forte to get up and speak in front of people. It makes me real nervous, but she did ask me to speak, and the message is great because I do an own a store, a small business, and it's about shopping local, and I'm very passionate about that. I love my store, 
And um, so, of course, I'm going to get up and speak, and hopefully next time I will be sitting there and listening to other <laughs> speakers. But, um, you know, speaking about shopping local, I feel like I'm, you know, probably speaking to, preaching to the choir here, because I don't think any of us would be here at 7.30 in the morning if we didn't realize how important community is and how important it is to show up. Um, so I don't really need to go into that. Um, and it's interesting to hear about the downtown, downtown Greenfield. I'm in a downtown area in Shelburne Falls. And I was thinking back to like, I guess what downtowns used to be the convenience of shopping, because that's where people gathered and, and did their thing. And you know, then it turned into strip malls where that became more convenient and the big box stores and that, you know, because you could get a lot done in a quick amount of time. And now we have the convenience of shopping at home, going on our computers and having something delivered to your doorstep. And that's pretty darn convenient. Um, and it's great. I mean, I do all of it. And um, I love this list, which I brought up with me because I'd like to encourage us all to take this with us and to see how many of these places you can mark off during your holiday um, shopping. Because and just use this as a reference. Keep it in your car when you're going places, because um, it is so important to physically shop in stores. Not only for us, but I heard something driving. Um, about how it's physically important to actually go shopping into stores. Um, I was a kindergarten teacher for a year way back when, and in kindergarten you learn about the five senses, as that's part of being a human being. You know, we need to see, we need to hear, we need to smell, we need to touch, we need to taste. Um, and going into a shop, you get to use all of your senses, and it, it's part of us being human beings. And I was thinking, you know, maybe there's one day, we all have avatars now, and maybe there's one day that when you have that 7.30 breakfast to go to, maybe you get to send your avatar. And, <laughs> and there's probably someone selling that avatar clothing that they can, in designer clothing that they can send it to, and I might be speaking to that, but isn't it great that we're all here right now as human beings? And, um, and it's important. And so actually physically doing the steps to go into stores, is good for everybody. It's good for our community. It's good for our, ourselves. Um, another analogy I want to give is like we're, this is a chamber, just like the heart, we have chambers. And this is a part of a chamber, just like we have a heart that has chambers, and how it's important to exercise. And another confession, I'm not great at my exercising as a regular routine, but I know that it's important. I know it's important to eat healthy, it's important to exercise. So I do it, even though it's not the most convenient thing for me, um, but I want it to work. I want my body to work well. And that's another thing as Chambers, we want it to work. And in order for things to work, that means we have to get out there and do it. Um, so that's my little spiel about that, but I think we all know that, like, again. Um, so let me tell you about my store. It's called Enjoy, and I um, probably have one of the best views in Western Massachusetts, I'm gonna say. Um, I want to say the world. <laughs> I don't know about that. Do it. Okay, yeah. the world. And um, it's beautiful. And my desk is right there, and I get to turn around and look at the Deerfield River, and um, it's gorgeous. I'm in a beautiful building. I share it with Bate, who has been there a little longer than I have. And I love the community there. Anyways, I could go off on that. It's a great community. Um, but what I so enjoy, I've been in retail my whole life. I am 53 years old. I started when I was 16 working in a downtown JCPenney's, and I did their window displays after school when I was in high school. And I would go in, and I loved it. And throughout my life, I just always ended up in retail positions working, even when I was going to college, this and that. And finally, I realized, you know, this is what I really love to do, is being in retail. And um, I was fortunate to work for a family, a woman who actually went to, was a pre-med student at UMass and opened up a store that she ran for 30 plus years because that was her passion, it was what she loved. And um, so I got to learn a lot of things from her and when I was able to open my store and one of the prompts questions for doing this speech was how did you end up in Franklin County? And I'd like to say we found each other. I happened to be visiting Shelburne Falls one evening for dinner and um, some music and I just started talking to people, and next thing you know, I was being walked up Deerfield Avenue to say, hey, this is a friend of mine, and you should talk to her, and one thing led to another, and I now have a store in this wonderful space. Um, and at the time, I, was, I have three children that I've raised, and they were getting older, and I'm like, okay, what's my next thing? I've been in retail, I love it. I'd like to open a store, but I have no idea where, and that just sort of happened. And um, 
very grateful for that. Um, but what, you know, I've been in retail so long, and I did the buying for eight to ten years at the store I was at. And when I started doing the buying, I realized learn more about manufacturing and what goes on, and um, you know, mass manufacturing products and. And that was a big eye-opener for me, which a lot of us don't get to experience. Um, so when I did open my store, it was very important to me to carry things that are, have ethical values behind their products. So at Enjoy, I do a lot of research on the companies I carry. Um, I get to know the people um, to make sure that they have an ethical value to their products. Um, and it could be sustainability in the fabrics they use. It could be that they employ um, you know, unmarginalized communities. Um, they give back to their community. So when you're shopping Enjoy, you're not only supporting local, it could be local, it could be global. Um, but I, I really work hard at making sure that I can feel good about the products I sell, that they are making a positive contribution in their community, wherever that, there, that is. And it could be USA, but USA, you know, it could be globally. Um, and I, I believe that that's very important in it. So, um, that is what you can find at Enjoy. Um, one of the questions, too, is how does the, the holiday impact the rest of my year? I was doing my numbers, and it's actually my second biggest quarter of the year is holiday following fall, even though I had a very good spring this year, um, which I'm very grateful for. Um, so we'll see. Uh, but um, it is important, so um, holiday shopping. And I'm grateful because I think a lot of people in this community appreciate the local economy and want to do that and so it has been important and Moonlight Magic is going to happen this year again. It was amazing last year and it's going to even be more amazing this year. Um, I am part of that and close to the people that are organizing it and they're, they're just really gung-ho this year so I encourage you all to come out for that. Um, how can we help is follow this list. You know, shop your people that are that are local, that support this community, the greater community. Um, social media is huge. Um, going online, liking things, posting things. Just word of mouth is probably the number one um, thing that really gets people to like want to come in. And Shelburne Falls is growing. We, we have a lot of new things happening there. People are opening new stores. Now, another friend who's a lawyer, and she decided to open a new store, and she's like, it's because this is what I love to do. There's a lot of passion going on in Shelburne Falls of people who love what they do, and you feel it when you're there. People say that to me all the time when they come in. They say, there's something special, but I just feel good when I come to Shelburne Falls, and it's because there's just a group of people that are doing what they're passionate about. If it's a restaurant, if it's a gallery, if it's a store, and you feel that when you're there. Again, going back to being human beings. Um, an incentive I'm doing right now is called the Daily Spotlight. So every day, starting today, um, I'm, sh I'm focusing on one product that I'm putting out on social media, and that product's 20% off. I just did an a email blast about that yesterday. Um, so that's sort of fun to check in to see what those are going to be that's, that are going to go through the 24th of December. Um, but thank you again for having me, and um, thanks for being here. Okay. So today's 20% uh, spotlight are these incredible tights. I saw the video last night. They are so cool. So after you go to Baker's, head up the hill, grab some tights. You won't regret it. And I'd also like to just speak to what um, Joy was saying about the community in Shelburne Falls. Um, our good friend Kathy Roberts put together um, in partnership with Rebecca Told. Um, or Rebecca Rideout from Told Video, a really lovely tribute to Shelburne Falls and the merchants there. I know, where's Tim? Tim was a big part of that getting its legs, so thank you very much. Um, but the video that really just kind of captures the heart and soul of Shelburne Falls, we have that available on our website, and I think we just posted it on social media this week. So please please watch the video. There's several, which Kathy's calling Merchant Minutes, coming out, but it just, it really gives you a sense for the community feel that Joy was talking about in Shelburne Falls. So next we have Raymond Neal, who is the owner of Roundabout Books in Greenfield and Boswell's Books in Shelburne Falls.
Thank you for having me and good morning. I, um, I was just pre preparing uh, for this and I'm, I'm pleased that so many people have been talking about community. I made a note to myself um, to begin and end this short little talk thinking about community. Um, I had a funny experience um, when I first moved to Greenfield. So I was, my wife and I were moving from Baltimore. Uh, she had come here to change careers. She got a fellowship at, at Smith College to, to become a teacher. And um, so and I was really excited to come back to, to New England. Um, I'd always really loved it here. And I, um, I applied for a job at uh, Four Rivers Charter School in Greenfield. And uh, when I first visited, I went around the rotary and I kind of, pa I, I followed the GPS probably. Um, and I sort of saw the Home Depot um, and I, I knew from the Wikipedia page that Greenfield was a, was a city of maybe 15,000 people or so. Um, and I thought that that, that area uh, with, with Staples and Home Depot and so forth um, was all of Greenfield. Um, you know, I, Joy was, I made several notes about things that Joy was speaking about. Thanks for your, you had some really excellent themes, Joy, that really resonated with me. Um, but one thing that I got used to when I was, um, when I was growing up was sort of the, 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 the strip mall changes of the United States. And that's what I thought of as small communities. So I had this really wonderful experience that, um, you know, like a week later, I think after I was hired maybe, um, I discovered that there was this wonderful downtown <laughs> in Greenfield. Um, and I love to walk. And uh, so I walk downtown most evenings. Um, and uh, it's just been something that's meant a lot to me all along that we have this coherent city. Um, and so I, in, you know, I think the main reason that I started a business here is that, is that my wife and I bought a home here and, um, and, and that's, this is where we were. Um, but it's always been something that meant a lot to me that, that this was uh, a coherent community space and that the, the businesses, people like yourselves, um, made it feel like um, that, that our community still had something um, that, that I, I maybe thought wasn't in, didn't entirely exist. Um, so it's with that kind of sense of reverence that, um, that I, you know, I became a part of the business community myself. Um, and another, another theme, um, so, so that's one thing, is just the, the physical um, and uh, the physical aspect of our community, the coherence of our community, the presence of small businesses um, that made, a pla made the place someplace really um, enriching and elevated for, for, for me to be. Um, and then trying to think about how to be a part of that, uh, we decided to open a bookstore. Um, so we opened our bookstore in, in 2012, uh, and at that time, everybody told me, well, people buy things online now. So I thought, okay, we'll open a warehouse, and we'll, we'll sell books through the mail. Um, that's what we'll do. Um, it turns out that that had already been done by Amazon. <laughs> um, so I, I, hadn't, I hadn't paid attention. I think I, I sort of, I was just talking to my wife last night. I said, why is it that we thought the internet was going to be a fad? <laughs> um, and, and she said, I think you just thought that, Raymond. <laughs> Um, so, so it had already been done, and, and you know, so we, we still sell through the mail. We, still, we, we now sell all over the world. Um, but I've had the funny experience, so I was first surprised that Greenfield had a downtown, and that's delightful. I was delighted by the businesses that were there. We always shopped at Wilson's, for example. I'm truly delighted to see that, um, that there's something really wonderful going into that space. That was, that's been great to hear. But then I was also surprised that for me, um, I thought retail had gone in one direction, but for me, all, all along, the sort of brick and mortar business um, that I thought was too wonderful to assume that I could be a part of, <laughs> uh, the brick and mortar business has always been how we've actually made a living. So very early on, by, by, by mid-2012 or 2013, uh, we were building a, a storefront right on Kenwood Street, which is, a, which is maybe makes more sense as a warehouse. I will say I really do like the way that if you have a, a giant bookstore on a side street, when people wander into your bookstore and it's like <laughs> this bright light, like what's going on here? You know, we have now, um, 
50,000 books and CDs and DVDs catalog. And so when people come in, they're like, what? like how did I, I was just walking my dog, like what happened, you know? Um, so that's kind of exciting, but all along, it has been actually selling books to people, the sort of healthful experience that Joy was speaking of. It's been that that's also been sustaining for roundabout books. Um, so I'll just, I'll tell you a little bit about our store in case you haven't visited. So we're currently over on Kenwood Street in Greenfield. We've been there since 2012. We've been in that same location. We've been on a month to month lease for 10 years. Um, we, uh, like I said, we have, um, I think it's now 50,000 books cataloged. Uh, we have um, about, um, we, we, we usually like every month also have a giant 10,000 CD and DVD sale. We're having one today starting at 10. Um, we have uh, 10 employees. Um, we ship using the United States Postal Service um, throughout the United States and, and like I said, we ship internationally as well. Um, and we've been trying to cultivate um, a, a bookstore that, that has a, a a really outstanding selection from the beginning. I'm always really pleased when people are surprised um, by the quality of books we have. We, we began with used books. We began a new books uh, department in 2019. And then last year we purchased the, um, uh, it was once the Diamond Electric Soap Company at 85 Pierce Street, which is a 10,000 square foot space from Joel Tongarelli. Um, and so that'll be our new home uh, starting in December. So that's, that's generally our, our store. Um, in the early days, um, it's, it's hard not to just tell stories, but um, in the early days, I will say, in addition to that healthful experience of you know, selling books directly to people who come in the store or sustaining us, um, I also had the experience, um, before people really found out about us, we were in this kind of lull between the internet being a really challenging way to sell um, and not, you know, not really having a lot of local customers yet. Um, so I had the experience also, I, I sold books on the street at Copley Square. Um, so that sustained us for about a year. Um, I, would, I, would I would hand select books and that's been a, that was a very quickening sort of experience to say, okay, what books are gonna sell on the street? You know, what used books are the things that if anybody finds them, they're gonna say, wow, this is an outstanding collection. Um, and it really sharpened um, you know, what I think we are able to put together. And so now, it's, again, it feels like this luxury. When people come in, they come to visit our place. We're able to give them an experience in a retail store. Um, and it means a lot to me. It's something that I feel deeply grateful for. And we do have people in Franklin County who were very much um, excited by and committed to this kind of local buying experience and this healthful experience of going in and seeing books well organized. Um, and, and I think also, I would also emphasize this kind of welcoming experience. Um, you know, early on people asked me, and this was, this was a little disconcerting. They would say, you know, I would say what I did, I'm in books, and they would say, well, what's your brand? I said, well, I, don't, I don't know, we're a bookstore. Um, we sell books. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I think there was this, and don't get me wrong, I mean, I think a lot about branding now, and it's exciting, actually. I love to think about, well, how would you convey this? What is special about our place? So I, believe me, branding is a good idea. Um, but, you know, traditionally, what you would ask someone would be, uh, what's your product? You know, so it was interesting to me to have this experience, oh, what's your brand? Like, what's, you know, what are you going to, what are you going to put together and make people think, like, they have to buy from you? Well, we're going to put together an excellent product. You know, and to some extent, I think that that has been like what we've developed as our as our brand is the idea that there would be this um, this focus on the product that we would that we would we would be sourcing outstanding books that we would be um, you know selecting outstanding books you know putting them in the right uh, putting them in, in the right sort of curation as people talk about now um, and that that would and that that would be kind of the core it would be a very down to earth sort of vision uh, in that way. The other thing that's evolved over time, and it's maybe particularly um, noticeable um, when you come into our concrete block building, is that I think there's also, and again, this speaks to what Joy was speaking about, about the, um, the sort of healthful experience of, of, uh, of exercising our ability to come in person in, in places, is that you know, the kind of experience that a customer gets uh, or a member of the community visiting before they necessarily purchase anything, um, the kind of experience they get is, is something that is 
defined by what we bring for our individual shops or our or in this case, our, you know, our college, things like that, our institutions. And I like to think that, that our shop is consistently welcoming, um, that it's something that is unpretentious but, but, but elevated, that people will feel like if they come in and they're looking for a book, that they're going to get all of my attention if they, if they need it, um, that they're going to feel special, um, that it's, it's going to be a place where there's a, there's a graciousness um, and that they're going to they're gonna feel our, you know, our gratitude. Not that it's intrusive, and I think you know, booksellers, they have a lot of introverts, and, uh, which I am, and I, and I think you know, we'll let people shop. Um, but it, I just think it's, I think it's essential when we start thinking about community. So I was thinking about the larger form of community, it's sort of walkability and coherence of community. But in the small version of it, um, for a person to come in and to feel like they matter that we're grateful to them. Um, and I think that that's something that, um, that I didn't know was going to be a part of our um, kind of brand. So there's this kind of, there was this kind of focus on their product from the beginning, and, there was, and, and I believe that I have learned about myself that it matters to me um, that when a member of the community comes in, that they feel like they're deeply welcomed, uh, even if they don't buy anything. Um, that, uh, that they matter. Um, I, um, I've also been thinking about, um, you know, we're, we're getting ready to this big move that I alluded to. Um, so we're moving out, I, I may have said, uh, des December 15th. Uh, I think early 2023 we'll be moving into the, uh, we'll be um, opening to the public. At the, at the Pierce Street location. Um, and that's something I'm just, you know, absolutely, absolutely excited about. Um, and I think that for me too, it kind of comes sort of full circle to, um, to this idea of a, of a coherent community. Um, I just think it, it, it's, it's, I have enjoyed so much thinking about um, what kind of, you know, we planted a grove of dogwood trees out front of the building, you know. Um, you know, I've enjoyed so much thinking about what to, we've been painting the floors. And I, I just love the idea of this kind of welcoming um, that I described to you that can happen in a concrete block building. But if you can plant dogwood trees in a green space, it's, it's, it's pretty wonderful. <laughs> um, so that's something that, um, that is, is very much on my mind um, right now, of course. And I guess my hope is that I can, you know, when somebody else comes to this community freshly or comes to our store freshly, that we can be some kind of, um, um, you know, block of, of um, giving them the experience that I most hope for. Um, so that's, that's what I'm imagining for, the, for this, um, this coming year. Thank you so much. I just stopped in Roundabout Books yesterday, and uh, Raymond's exactly right. It is so welcoming. And let's not forget that November is the perfect time to buy a hardcover book, gently read it, and then gift it in December. So please stop in, and Raymond will make recommendations on what he thinks other people will like. Lastly, we have Astronauta, who is the owner of Goose Divine Energy in downtown Greenfield. Um, she's located right next to Ice Cream Alley. I had the opportunity to hear her speak at uh, the September Business Breakdown hosted at Green, uh, Green Space Cowork, and her energy is infectious. Astronauta is a newer member to the chamber, but we didn't want to waste any time welcoming her to the network, so please help me welcome Astronauta. Thank you, Jesse. Thanks for inviting me. This is a major reality shift. Usually at this time, I'm driving three grumpy teenagers to school, and they don't really care what I have to say. <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for being here, and I'm in good company. I wore Enjoy today. I didn't even know. Um, but I'm modeling one of the lovely pieces I got at one of my favorite stores, and Boswell's is, much to my chagrin, my daughter's favorite store in Franklin County. She's told me that. <laughs> Um, 
My name is Astra Nada, and um, I have a shop called, oh, it's, at, at this point now, it's more what I call it, I call it an art gallery and a plant magic boutique. Um, I intentionally didn't use the, the, the word medicine, because some people associate um, differently with that, but before synthetic medicine, there were plants to help us, and uh, there's a real, um, it's not transition, but a real resurgence of people interested in that kind of um, um, way to work with your body and your energy. So in addition to um, what I think is a really beautiful space um, for to display local artwork, we also have um, a, a whole shelf that's full of um, locally produced and, and created and crafted um, plant remedies and um, elixirs, potions, um, salves, balms, um, tinctures, and, and they're all incredibly different, but the common thread is that they're all made by people in our community, um, all in very different ways. Um, right now, um, well, if you've been in there, then you know what I'm talking about, but for those of you who haven't been in, it's a it's an interesting space. It's one large room and then a small room um, off to the side in the back. So the front room is a um, is a, a really ideal space, especially since Eversource came and replaced all of my lighting. Um, and it's just a really beautiful space to display artwork. And right now, Donna Estabrooks, who some of you might know, she's a beloved painter in Pioneer Valley. Um, her paintings are up um, until January, and um, they're very vibrant and colorful, and they make great gifts. Um, there's a wide variety of sizes and, and prices, and it's really accessible to, to everyone and anyone. And then in the smaller back room is a collection of local artwork from a variety of artists. Um, Jim Murphy, who's a brilliant landscape painter from Ashfield, and, Jules Jones, who is a young emerging um, greenfield talent, works with collage and abstract. Um, so it's a real variety. Some established um, people well into their career and uh, artists who are just getting out there and getting known in the community. So I'm proud to represent all of them. Um, Jesse thankfully gave us some, some prompts here. Um, and so I'm going to consult my notes. but. Um, you know, uh, one of the questions was about what makes um, um, my establishment unique. Um, some of you might know that um, I, I've, I've actually been in Greenfield as a small business owner in the same spot for six years. But um, as of six months ago, I transformed the space with a lot of help from a lot of people, including MJ Adams and the CDC and um, everyone over COVID who um, encouraged me to stay open and figure it out. Um, so big thanks goes out to all of those people. Um, and I was able to transition from um, a thrift store. It was called Goose, Goose Exquisite Thrift. And it was a highly curated thrift store. Um, but um, with the pandemic and, and my um, acknowledgement that I had to restructure in some way, I was able to transform it into this new incarnation. So um, it's actually really fun when people come in looking for a pair of jeans and they're like, where am I? <laughs> so if you haven't um, you know, come in to see the transition, um, I encourage you to do so. And um, yes, OK, so um, um, why did I, I choose uh, to open a business in Franklin County was a, a question that um, was good for me to think about. and. Um, you know, like anything in my life uh, that winds up being beneficial to me, it really always starts with a good feeling. And um, every time I would come to visit my friends who opened up a shop in Shelburne Falls, the Bridge Street Bazaar, I would come to visit them. And every time I had to leave, I, I, I felt sad about that. <laughs> and so I thought, well, maybe I should just stay here. I grew up on Cape Cod which is, as you know, an equally beautiful place, you know, as far as nature goes. But um, 
it was starting to feel unsustainable as far as, as uh, having a business there goes. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I decided to work with what I had, which was a secondhand inventory, um, a collection, and, uh, and that's how I started the thrift shop. But um, one of the, th the, there's so many things I, I love about this area, uh, you know, besides the natural beauty, which I wasn't willing to go anywhere that wasn't, you know, equally as, as gorgeous as the cave. And this felt like, like it was to me. But um, I really like the centrality of this area and, and how in any direction, I mean, you can be in a different state within a half an hour or an hour, and it's remarkable to me that you can really, you know, travel um, in any direction and find something that is really interesting and, and the river culture and food accessibility and water accessibility were um, um, something that um, was important to me. And so um, that was another, those were all other reasons why I decided to choose Franklin County. Um, it also kind of reminds me of the Cape before it, it, it became what it is now, which is slightly inaccessible for, for people in certain um, income brackets. But um, this feels like a very inclusive community and a lot of people coexisting together and figuring out how to make it work. Um, and so that's another aspect that I really enjoy of the, about this area. Um, um, some of the challenges that I'm facing as a business owner here and, and, and how can, can you help was one of the questions and I wanted to address that because I feel like once people discover my establishment, they, they love it and uh, they tell people about it, but it's been challenging to get people to know about it. So. Um, um, I always joke that I should get one of those like noodle air things in front of it, <laughs> but um, it doesn't really go with my aesthetics. <laughs> so, um, so word of mouth has really kept me open all these years, and and even if um, you know, so so I encourage everybody to come in and just see what I'm doing with the space, and and not only are you supporting me personally, but every single thing in that space is being, you know, handcrafted and created by somebody locally. I take pride in, in saying that there's nothing in there that you could order on Amazon. And that's no dig to Amazon. It has its place and is serving a lot of people. But, um, but you know, I love when people come in and say, oh, I know this person who makes this. and and. Um, yeah, I started working with some other business owners in town, Diana Dawkins, who uh, has Pure Pro products. Uh, she's, um, I'm the only retail business now um, carrying her um, essential oils. And, you know, these kind of things, they feel sort of ethereal, the plant magic aspect. And, um, and I like to explain to people that, you know, it's beyond like a, a physical thing. It's working with your energetic field. These, these products and tinctures like really help you, you know, get in touch with your personal. And that's why I, I went with the, the, the tagline divine energy because, um, you know, people are getting more interested in working with their energetic fields as like, as an extension of their physical body. And I understand if that's not something you're super interested in, but I guarantee you know someone who is. So I would encourage you. And that's another thing when people come in, they always say, oh, so-and-so would love the store, or my daughter, or my friend. And, and so, yeah, it, it's great. If, if you don't find anything in there for you, I know you'll, you'll be able to recommend it to somebody else. Um, um, so yeah, as far as how, how I, I can receive support from, from this particular community, I guess the simple answer would be, you know, to just stop by, get a feel of the, about the place, um, you know, check-ins, positive reviews on social media, all of those things are, are really um, helpful. Um, and um, I do have some upcoming events um, uh, happening, and um, one of them is Moonlight Magic. Uh, it will be my first time there, so I'm excited about that. There's also an event at the Montague Retreat Center this Sunday. I'll have a table with all the CBD products I carry and tinctures. 
um, working on getting some workshops together at the shop. Um, there's a lot of local makers who have these remarkable skills and they're wonderful teachers. Um, so we're working on a uh, knitting workshop in February with Sue Kranz, and a uh, rattle making workshop with a, a, a creator up in um, New Littleton, New Hampshire. Her name is Adi Two Owls and she makes beautiful rattles, ceremonial tools, um, altar building objects. and. Um, so these are all things I'm, I'm really excited about that, that are coming up. And um, I'm just, you know, I feel um, honored to be in this community and to have weathered the storm of COVID. And I, I'm glad to be at, at, here at GCC for something other than a COVID test. <laughs> it's really refreshing. And, um, and I am in, in really in awe of this community and, and its support. Uh, of each other, I really have never and continue to to feel an absence of competition, especially with um, business owners. And I think that's so lovely. And I know people think competition is healthy, and it is to a certain extent. But at this point in our growth, you know, the total support that I feel from the, my fellow business owners, from people like Jesse and and Jeremy, who invited me to the Greenfield business. Um, association, you know, people really reaching out, really MJ Adams walking into the store saying, how are you doing? What do you need? This is unique, I, I think, and I feel so deeply grateful for it. And um, yeah, so, you know, it's it shop local, you know, sh and support, you know, your local makers. Um, there's there's a, a, a multi-layered aspect when you walk into a store in your community, like Joy was saying, as this ripple effect, and you're not just helping that one person in that one business, it's, you know, it just, it extends out into the, the greater community in a beautiful way. So um, please stop by when you can. I am between Ice Cream Alley and the Greenfield Gallery, which is also the top um, floor of that is now called the Hive Maker Space, which is another exciting space happening in Greenfield. And um, with the progression of the, the Wilson's News, and um, I really do, I, when I first came here, I had this, this palpable feeling that there was great potential for Greenfield and Franklin County in general. And um, as people migrated out of the cities during COVID. I've just met so many families and folks that are moving here for all these reasons that we've all just, you know, expounded about. And I feel like it's ex an exciting time and I'm really thankful to be a part of it. So thanks for listening. <laughs> So as Astronomy just said, she is in between Greenfield Gallery and Ice Cream Alley. I only mentioned Ice Cream Alley, so you know where my priorities lie. Um, but in addition to selling artwork and artisan items, Astronaut Storefront is a work, artwork in and of itself. It's so beautiful, so please stop in. So as we just heard this morning, there is a number of ways that we all power our community just by virtue of the fact that you're all here shows your dedication to investing locally, so thank you. Every dollar spent locally owned businesses spent in locally, locally owned businesses will have three times the impact on our Franklin County communities as the same dollar spent at a national chain store. When shopping locally, we simultaneously create jobs, invest in neighborhood improvement, promote community development, and fund more town and city services through sales tax. And we also support our friends like Astronauta, Raymond, and Joy. So please, please encourage everyone to shop locally all year round. On your tables, you saw the list of um, our retail-based chamber businesses. Let's show them our support. Marion's also geared up in the back to sell Franklin County gift cards. If you'd like to purchase one of those today, and as our program says, spend big and shop small. All right, thank you very much, everybody, for coming today. Remember to tuck in your strings, and we'll see you at the Citizens of Beer Breakfast in December.